Hello and welcome to Mystery Made Known, primers about all things Jesus and the Gospel. And in this video, we're considering into whose hands have we placed the welfare, the well-being and destiny of our souls? And what does following Jesus have to do with all this? Following, as in following other people, is alive and well and practiced by millions of people worldwide every moment of every day. I'm referring to social media and the choice of the word follow as the core of what social media is all about. The concept is simple. To follow somebody on social media is to automatically receive their content, their posts, their information. Whether it's private individual, a group or an organisation, popularity, influence and success is measured in the amount of followers gained and maintained. And have no doubt, much effort is given over to this contemporary digital form of discipleship. So then, following. So key is this concept of following to the philosophy, the ideology, dare I say the religion of social media platforms. So key is the concept of following that extensive statistical analysis is provided by the social media platforms to those who want to be followed in order for them to refine and perfect their influence upon those that they want to follow them. By the way, I'm quite aware of the irony that this video is part of this culture. So you see, while words like disciple and discipleship are not used, the concept or dynamic is present and has the potential to influence and shape the soul and well-being of any undiscerning follower. If we turn to the Bible, we find the idea of following at the heart of what is written. In the Old Testament, it usually surfaces in the form of either following God's ways or some opposing way. Psalm 81 is a good example. Here we have, in summary form, much of what the Old Testament is all about. God's love and grace being rejected by his people and the consequences that this brings to them. Verses 11 to 13 read like this. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. If my people would only listen to me, if Israel would only follow my ways. It then goes on to give assurance for victory over enemies and blessing for life if God's ways are followed. So. Wherever you look in the Old Testament, it's not long before the concept of following and walking a certain path emerges. Whether it's the story of individuals, families, tribes or whole nations, both origins and destinies are defined through the language of which path to follow, God's or the world's. It's no surprise then to find at the heart of Jesus and the gospel the language of following. In fact, it's one of the first thing Jesus says to people, follow me. Because of this, early Christians were referred to as simply followers of the way. After all, Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth and the life. Whether it's fishermen by the Lake of Galilee called to leave their nets and follow him or the hated tax collector in his booth, from the very beginning, Jesus makes it clear that the gospel of the kingdom of God is all about following him. The gospel of Matthew chapter 16 records the radical nature of what this following is all about. Here Jesus says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. A 
closer look at what Jesus has to say here in Matthew 16 reveals the depth and magnitude of what he offers. Jesus makes clear in an exchange with the Apostle Peter that the ancient options of the Old Testament remain the core human issue. Choose either God's concerns and ways, or like Peter chooses, humanity's concerns and ways. Jesus then reveals how high the stakes are. What is at stake is our very souls. He says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Don't let the radical and extreme nature of this language distract you from a crucial fact. Jesus is not making a threat here, but a gracious offer. He's not giving a harsh warning, but a word of hope and life. So what does Jesus offer? Well, a brief survey of what he teaches reveals this. He offers true freedom, eternal life in all of its fullness, a peace that the world can't provide, complete joy, truth, and most of all, his love. And that's just from one gospel, the Gospel of John. But in order to take hold of and receive these blessings, a person first needs to put down all the things that hinder following Jesus, all the things that burden our souls. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's so important to see this fact. Jesus presents himself as gentle and humble. The one who leads, guides, and accompanies those who follow is not a harsh taskmaster, but the man of peace, power, and love. In him and his way, we find rest for our souls. Here, finally, we come to the real challenge. There is no halfway house here. Following Jesus is no part-time activity. It's not something a person could add on to their existing life like an accessory, a hobby or a pastime. Jesus cannot be domesticated and incorporated into our lives. We cannot follow Jesus on our terms. This would be more like the casual shallow following of the world of social media, no real commitment and quick to hit the unfollow button when things don't go right. Following Jesus means, so to speak, taking control of our souls out of the harsh, merciless influence of the world and placing our souls into the safe, healing hands of Jesus. To follow Jesus means to let go of, to lay down the burden, the baggage that following the world's ways has put onto us. This is the purpose of taking up our own crosses, dealing with the greatest and most vicious and brutal enemy of our souls, our own self-centeredness, our own ego. For Jesus says this, For whoever wants to save their lives will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for somebody to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? So in this world of following, into whose hands have you placed the welfare and destiny of your soul? Who do you follow and where are they taking you? Who or what is shaping your soul, your identity, your destiny, the events and circumstances of your life or the death and resurrection of Jesus? The ancient choice still lies before each of us, the way of our loving creator or the opposing way of the world. The good news, the brilliant news, is that nobody is excluded from this offer that Jesus makes. 
all are qualified simply by their need of it. Success is guaranteed as well because Jesus never asks us to do what we cannot do with him. He says, follow me because we can, because that's what we were created for, because that is our true destiny, because that is the path to true freedom, peace, joy and love. So I pray that you will see his way before you. I pray that you will hear his voice beside you. I pray that you will leave your burdens behind you. I pray that you will choose to follow Jesus.